Now that we know how to find equilibrium price and quantity in a market, we can move that one step further to say once a market has reached equilibrium, what happens when there's a shock to that market in terms of a change in either supply or demand? Now economists have a fancy word for this called comparative statics, but when we use this term we really just mean let's analyze the changes in equilibrium due to a change in either supply, demand, or both. When analyzing changes in economic equilibrium, it's important to remember three main steps. The first step is to identify which curve or curves are moving around, whether it be demand or supply. And the way that we can think about this is to think back to our determinants of demand and determinants of supply and figure out which heading the situation that we're trying to analyze falls under. The second step is to identify in what way the curves shift. So this means do we have an increase in supplier demand or a decrease in supplier demand? And also we want to think a little bit about whether we have a price increase in terms of willingness to pay, whether we have a cost increase in terms of supply, or whether we have a specific right or left movement in terms of a constant quantity added for demand or supply. So we want to think about exactly what's going on so that we can algebraically figure out where the new equilibrium is going to be. The third step is to locate the new equilibrium and then to compare it to the original one to see at least qualitatively in which direction equilibrium price and quantity go. To start us off, we have four basic changes that could result in a new equilibrium price and quantity. Namely, we could have an increase in demand, we could have a decrease in demand, we can have an increase in supply, or we can have a decrease in supply. So we'll go through these four cases and show graphically what happens in each case, and then we'll do one algebraic example. Let's look at the case of an increase in demand. Now, an increase in demand could occur, for example, if people's incomes were to go up in good economic times, and we were thinking about the market, for example, for luxury yachts. Luxury yachts are most likely to be a normal good, such that when people's income increases, the demand for luxury yachts increases. So what would that look like on our graph here? Well, like we said before, an increase in demand is represented by a shift to the right of the demand curve, so we can put in a new demand curve that looks something like this. Now, since income is a determinant of demand, but not a determinant of supply, nothing happens to the supply curve here. And we can notice we have our old equilibrium price and quantity where the original supply and demand curves intersected. And we have the new equilibrium price and quantity where the new supply and demand curves intersect. Which is here, because our old supply curve is still relevant, but now we've got to intersect it with this new demand curve here. So we can say now that we have a new equilibrium price here, which I'll call P1 star, and a new equilibrium quantity, which I'll call Q1 star. Now we can think about why this happens. And the mechanism goes something like the following. When we have an increase in demand, we're going to have some sort of temporary shortage because we were at this price point here and when the demand increased we're getting to a point where demand is greater than supply. We said before that when you have a shortage that price is going to get bid up until there's no more shortage. So what really happens here is you have this temporary shortage and the price gets bid up until supply and demand meet and you end up at this new equilibrium price and quantity here. So what you can see is we've moved up and to the right on our graph. Notice that because of a shift in demand, we've moved along the original supply curve. And we can say here, when we have an increase in demand, that that results in an increase in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. Now let's analyze a decrease in demand. 
a situation that we can think of that will lead to a decrease in demand is let's consider an increase in the price of Kindle books. Now this is something that's actually pretty relevant right now because a number of Kindle books have moved from a price of $9.99 to a price of $15. Now let's think about what happens as a result of that change on the market for the Kindle. Now if you recall from the determinants of supply and demand, prices of related goods is a determinant of demand because Kindle books and Kindles are complements, namely things that are used together. So when we have an increase in the price of the Kindle books, it's going to lead to a decrease in demand for the Kindle. We represent a decrease in demand as a shift to the left of the demand curve, so we get something that looks like the following. So now, we've moved from the intersection of the original supply and demand curve to a point still on the same supply curve because the change in the price of the Kindle books hasn't affected the supply of Kindles, only the demand for them. So we're now intersecting the original supply curve with this new demand curve here. And we're left with a new equilibrium quantity, which I'll label Q1 star, and a new equilibrium price, which I'll label P1 star. And you'll notice that this time we have a movement down and to the left of our equilibrium. And again, we can think about why this happens. When you see the decrease in demand for the Kindle, what you see at the very beginning is in fact a temporary surplus, because you have the supply of Kindles out here, whereas the demand for Kindles is here. And we said when we have a surplus, that leads to the price being bid down such that the supply and demand meet somewhere in the middle. So again, temporary surplus bids the price down to this new equilibrium where supply and demand again come together. So now we can say here, in response to a decrease in demand, we're going to see a decrease in equilibrium quantity and a decrease in equilibrium price. Well, this should make sense because it's exactly the opposite effect of what we saw when we had an increase in demand.